My name is Isaac George. I work here at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia University Medical Center. I'm an assistant professor of surgery since 2012. I am the surgical director of the Structural Heart and Valve Center. The Structural Heart Program at Columbia has been at the forefront of transcatheter valve technology. We really were uh, leaders in transcatheter valve technology for the aortic valve space, uh, including leading trials uh, for the Edwards uh, valve technology uh, for low-risk patients, for intermediate-risk patients, and for high-risk patients. These trials have all been some of the highest enrolling sites here at New York Presbyterian Hospital Columbia. The new trials that are available include trials that are in the aortic valve space, the mitral valve space, and tricuspid valve space. We oftentimes have access to these devices that are early stage devices that are in trial. We're able to use them in an experimental fashion in clinical trials, and we're able to then help companies and help other device technology uh, aspects improve and uh, improve the technology, improve the procedure itself, and then we're able to use them again in later trials. So we have a, a, a really important hand in modifying and revising and editing and improving these devices for later use. I think it's really important to, to first step back and understand that we're taking care of patients. We spend a lot of time at the very beginning when we meet people really discussing what their goals are, what their needs are, who do they have at home, who's going to be taking care of them afterwards, what do they want, and we really work with each individual patient to, to make sure that they're getting the best care that they want and the best thing that's right for them. We have the, the real luxury of having two great leaders at our institution who have really driven the field forward from transcatheter valve technology. Marty Leon has led our valve center and our transcatheter valve program from the start and has been instrumental in every step of the way worldwide. He's an internationally known figure and he's provided us the, the confidence, the the infrastructure, the finances, to be able to do trials that we otherwise would not be able to do. Cardiac surgery has been hand-in-hand -hand, uh, a supportive step for all of these trials, and Dr. Craig Smith has really embraced the technology. This is especially important in an era where cardiac surgery and interventional cardiology oftentimes are adversarial. In contrast, we have been the model of really uh, appropriate and professional uh, conduct in terms of our behavior between the two departments and we are really as close as we possibly can be with the unifying goal of taking care of patients and advancing this technology. I think it's important to remember that because we have so many ways we can treat patients we really never give up. We really want to do whatever we can to help people uh, and it's rare that we really say we can't help you. So we have at our plate both medical options to take care of patients, we have interventional options to take care of patients, we have transcatheter options to take care of patients, and even cardiac surgery when none of those are able to be offered or work. So all of those are available. Those are oftentimes in form of trials. And we tell patients, look, we have some of the world's leaders in doing these trials and using the technology and we are able to take risks and able to still be safe in doing so. The next step in technology is going to be a, a really exciting field um, in valve therapies. We're opening up new avenues to take care of the mitral valve uh, from both repair as well as replacement technologies. And the same is true for the tricuspid valve. It's now that we're seeing that we have options to take care of these patients that are non-surgical, we're seeing more and more of these patients. They're very sick patients that we never would have thought we were going to treat, and now we have ways to treat them.